Hey you guys, it's terribly bland, but you can call me TV. Welcome back to part three of Shovel Knight. We are probably about halfway through uh, with the King Knight's level. Uh, so our goal here is to finish this one up by the end of the episode because you can't actually save in the middle of uh, locations. So that does mean that I'm kind of have to go balls to the wall every single time. And record all the way through, and I don't mind doing that for you guys. I love you guys. Uh, the Griffin is actually, to me, one of the prettiest bad guys in the whole entire game, especially as far as mini bosses go. I would really like to make a curler project out of him and post that on my wall. Hello? Five dollar bills, I guess. <laughs> Except, um, I don't think I'm gonna be getting most of this money. Alright, let's see where we can go with this. Okay. We are a platforming machine, right? I'm the best you've ever seen, right? Okay, I know that's not true. But I don't know, sometimes I think I'm not so bad. <laughs> like when I zonked all of those guys out. I don't know if that's the right word for that. But that's okay. Let's see what's chilling out down here. Okay. Let's make this work. Ah, shit. Um, okay, cool. We can still get up there. I don't think we're getting up here. No, that's a bum. Schlep. Darn. Diddly darn. Still cannot stress how much I love the purple and gold and green layout. That fact isn't about to change at all. You know what? I think I... I think I advanced too early. I think I missed out on some money ops and maybe even like a magic note or two. Or music note, pardon me. Pardon me. I don't know, the mu the music on this game is magical. That's not debatable. Also, so the, the gold knight, the king knight, the shiny knight, whatever you want to call him, he doesn't strike me as a very learned man. And yet there are a lot of bookcases and such yada yada on this level and it's kind of confusing to me in all honesty it seems out of character he also doesn't strike me as a very musical fellow though so oh uh, unnerving okay <laughs> sorry if i get a little frantic and i start making gibberish noises i promise it's only for it's only with the best of intentions I promise. I really like this mechanic, actually. Mm, I know what's in there. I know what's under there. So let's go ahead and drink one of these up. Because when I go fishing, this little buggeroo is gonna pop out and he'll go ahead and refill one of my ickers. See? It's a little trip one. Yay! Oh, he gave me the invincibility one, too, which is probably not going to be that bad of an idea to have for... Uh, not a bad idea to have it around for that boss battle that we're going to be getting to eventually. Right? Ooh, I'm terrified! Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a baby. I'm a big, bad baby when it comes to some bits. Yeah, I know men I mentioned earlier that like uh, I used to watch my mom and my brother play platformers. I was just bad at video games in general though, let's be honest. I even remember having to, I couldn't beat Link to the Past, so I had to watch my mom and my brother play that too. Although, so my mom was actually on the forefront of gaming. Uh, I remember. So, just so you guys know, I'm 25, um, so I was born in 1989, and when I was born, my parents got a cat and a dog, and they ended up naming the cat Zelda, because that was right when the original Zelda ads for NES were starting to release, and they were really obnoxious, and they would scream, Zelda, at the screen, and every single time, when my mom first got this cat, every single time that happened, the cat would jump at the TV screen. So she named it Zelda, and then she ended up buying the game, and she ended up loving the game. And my mom has been a huge Zelda fan ever since. And she also loves Mario, and she loves Mega Man, she loves just good old-fashioned Nintendo platformers. Uh, 
But yeah, I couldn't beat Zelda, so I had to watch my own mommy. I had to watch my mommy beat Zelda because I couldn't handle it. Inherently, when, uh, when we first got, uh, when we first got Ocarina of Time, also, by the way, this is, like, the easiest boss in the world. When we first got Ocarina of Time, like, my dad wanted to play as well, and my brother, and my mom, and me. So, there were only three save files on Ocarina of Time, which meant that my brother and I weren't allowed to play it unless we were willing to share a file, which we absolutely, absolutely were not, let's be honest. When you're two years apart, what kids want to share a save file on a Zelda game together? None. Um... Wow, I'm super sorry if this whole conversation is, like, off-topic and sporadic. I can't do both of these at the same time, but it's okay, because he's almost dead anyways. Um, but yeah, so when we first got <laughs> Ocarina of Time, uh, we ended up having to watch my mom beat it first, because we couldn't have our own separate save files until my mom beat it, and we certainly weren't going to share a save file. And that's not a good game to share a save file on anyways, jeez louise. But yay! We beat him! We did it, you guys! We're the best there ever was, and no one's ever gonna bring us down. I just totally didn't even really pay attention to that fight, because I was so interested in telling a story. That was a first for me, okay? I've never actually, like, tried to tell a story while I was playing a game at the same time, so I didn't know how difficult that was going to be, and all of a sudden I have a lot more admiration for, um... Let's players who play difficult games while chatting it up with everybody. This is a new and difficult experience. Also, like, how- what a cute little shout out to Mario games. It just makes me really happy. But yeah, these little levels will spawn upon the map every once in a while when you actually, like, finish- What the fuck, man? What the fuck? I wanted your money! wanted your money. But yeah, these little levels will spawn every once in a while, and they're just an opportunity to get some extra cash in between, and maybe buy any of the weapons that you managed to miss out. Because like I said, if you come across the merchant dude in the levels, and you don't have enough money to buy from him, then you can go ahead and do it afterwards when you get back to town. That was just a nice way to make sure that you at least get the money for the items that you're going to need throughout the game. Although, realistically, I think you can actually beat the game without buying any of the side items. It just gets considerably more difficult. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love cash. I'm money hungry. Alright, so let's go ahead and give him some, some wonderful stuff. And make lots of money. We're rich. Wow, I have a lot of fucking money. So it's time to have a lot of fucking health, right? Yeah, it is. Which is good, because Spectre Knight is a fucking dick. And the first time I actually played through the game, I went to the Spectre Knight first, instead of um, playing through King Knight, which is not the natural progression of the game, let's be honest here. And I hated it. I probably... Most of the bosses in this game, I've not actually died against, but I ease... Oh, yeah, I bought all of his. Um... But I easily died to Spectre Knight at least, like, five or ten times before I managed to beat him. It was just upsetting. I wasn't really sure if that was, like, the set level of difficulty for the rest of the game, so I was getting a little hesitant in general, and I just was not out to have a good time. Um, that being said, you can actually save between level, like, when you're inside of a level, so I am probably going to call it quits here, but just so you guys have a little taste of what's going on, uh, we're going to go to the Lich Yard so you can see what's going to happen next episode. We are going to dig in, but not until next time. So I'll see you guys in another week. In the meantime, be good to each other. I love you. Bye-bye.